Okay, so we'll continue on Hilchas Melicha Simen Samach Tes. We're going to Gimel, Sifi Gimel, and Yudalet. Brief review of some of the concepts that we covered uh, recently. Uh, as we will see today, also some of these concepts are mentioned in Taruvas. So we're going to we're going to refresh our memory a little bit about some of the halachas there in Taruvas. After all, what we're dealing with are isurim, different kinds of isurim, and sometimes isurim are mixed with heter, and that's where, that's where the trouble begins. And the taru is the mixture of the isurim. So here in Hilchas Melicha, we're dealing with a different kind of a problem. If something was not nimlach properly, or not nimlach on time, uh, that could be a problem in itself, or, as we will soon see, it could also pose a problem if that piece of meat or chicken got mixed up with other pieces of meat that are okay were salted properly, were salted on time, and so forth. So either way, um, these halachas pretty much are related in, in some ways to Hilchas Tarubis. We discussed basa shen izbashen belo melicha. We, we discussed a situation where if a piece of meat was cooked without melicha altogether, it's obviously a problem. And even though Essentially, we're dealing with, according to most poiskim, an iser de Rabbanan, because it's either, uh, either well, in this, in this particular case, it's, it's uh, iser de Rabbanan because of dam shen is bashel, or in the case of bosar shen nimlach, after three days, uh, we said is also ki'ilu loy nimlach, as though it was not salted. Regardless of, of, of what the scenario is, even though it's an Isra de Rabbonan, nonetheless, we, it's, it's also. And it's also meaning that if it was cooked with other items in the pot, the rest of the items in the pot could become also. And we said, if you have shishim, then it's okay. If you have shishim, keneged oiso bosar, against the whole meat, then everything is mutter. And the mechaber seems to imply that even that piece was mutter. Which the Ramos says, no. Yesh oisrim dat chaticha. So we explained what the difference between the Mechaber and the Ramo or the Poiskim that allow that piece and the ones who don't. Uh, either you say that all the Dan came out, or, and, if you, and if the Dan did not come out, whatever stayed, stays. So, and we're not going to be Mahmur so much with it anyway. The whole thing is the Rabbana. So there is a, some leniency to permit that Chaticha. As opposed, of course, to other real Isurin that we don't make that kind of a Heter. We don't allow for that, you know, that that piece should remain mutter once you have shishim. That piece that is asr continues to, to be asr. On that seed, the Ramos says that basa shishoha shloisha yomim belo melicha, that if the meat was three days without melicha, af im nimlach, even if you did go ahead and salt it, ki ilu no nimlach. It is as though it was not nimlach. So he says basically it's the same kind of a din. And he even adds another case also that if it's lo nimlach koroil, it wasn't salted enough time. Lo nimlach koroil, dino kilo, lo nimlach koklala, so it was not salted. So all these kind of situations are pretty much the same. We treat them alike. It is as though it was not salted, and they would have a similar iser. In other words, the situation would be similar. In, after the fact, you look at it and you say, well, what do I do now? You definitely need shishim kenege de chaticha. It is as though it was not salted. In this case of being salted after three days. However, there's some leniency. Just a little bit of leniency about that chaticha. That was the only question. I don't believe we mentioned, however, another scenario. Then this one is brought by Rabbi Kiva Ega. What happens in the case of Basa Shanimlach? It was salted within the proper amount of time, within the thir- three days, but it was without hadocha komaisa, without the first hadocha. Okay, well, the, the halacha was very clear. We, we did cover a situation where there was no hadocha rishoyna, that it's also a big problem. Some say that it's not even mutter litzli. It all depends why, why you hold hadocha komaisa is for. If you hold it's like the smag, I mean, that you have the dam in there, that it could be mavliya, the dam inside, it could be a big problem, big source of, of, of trouble here, that this dam can never come out once the salt absorbed it inside. So you need to rinse, you need somehow to soak and get rid of that dam. 
But there was this other very important uh, idea that the, the soaking of the water is to soften the meat. Otherwise, the melech doesn't work well. We're not going to get into all the shitas. There were various shitas as to why you need a davakumaisa. And everybody agrees it's an important step before melicha is accomplished. In order for melicha to be done properly, you need that first hadacha. It is soaking, lechatchila, not just hadacha, not just to rinse. And that's what we do, you know, for half an hour or so, or more. It's important step. So Rabbi Kiva Egem brings down the case of what happens if you have basar shen nimlach without hadacha kamaisa, then is bashel. So what's different, what is different about this than what we learned? Well, we did learn only that if you haven't cooked it yet, some allow you to redo, the, to redo it all over again. Oh, you salted it without hadacha? You know what? Go ahead, we'll allow you a second chance. Go ahead and rinse off, remove the salt, do the hadacha, do the shriya, soak it, start all over again. In other words, what you first did doesn't count, and Baruch Hashem, it didn't hurt either. In other words, but the evet. Right? Not everybody agrees, though, because if you remember, if you recall, the Mechaber said, no, Yeshua Yisri. Even though in his first opinion, he says, he says, Yeshua Yisri. So therefore, the, just remember what the Ramah says, that that's the halacha of Yeshua Yisri. Except the Mokom Hefsi Merubo Yesh Lehatir. So all we know so far is this is an important Ramah, that in a Mokom of Hefsi Merubo situation, you could be matir to redo it. To remove the salt, rinse it, soak it, and go ahead and do melisa again. Okay. So that was clear in a situation where it was never cooked yet. You have a chance to redo it all over again. But what happens, we never, I don't think we discussed the scenario, or what happens if you didn't do it? I mean, obviously it was understood that if you didn't do it, you're in trouble. Because hadacha kamaisa is important. Without it, yeah, either according to the smak or according to the second opinion, that, uh, that it's as though you did not do anything, then for sure. If nothing happened, that means you have blood in that piece of meat that was cooked. All right. So the, the Rekiva Eger brings down like this. In reference to this halacha over here, of a basar shen izbash below melicha, that, it, that you need shishin keneged adam, and that chaticha becomes mutar, according to the mechaber, Rabbi Kiva Eger wants to say that if, the, if, it's a, if it's a situation where the basar was cooked without hadacha kamaisa, and it, it, it was cooked, then in this case, the chaticha should become asr. Okay? In other words, we will no longer have the leniency of the Ramah, of the Mechaba here. That chaticha is mutter. In this case, he says the chaticha should be asr. Why? Because he says we don't allow for two hefzad merubas. One hefzad merubah we can allow for. What are the two hefzad merubas? In the case of the Ramah, in the other case, where he... Uh, did not do it properly. In other words, he went ahead and salted it without doing hadacha. So Ramah says, you know, all right, okay, I'm going to allow for a hefsa merubah to do it all over again. So that's one hefsa merubah. What's that hefsa merubah based on? It's based on that we say, b'shat atchak, or b'hefsa merubah, that we do rely on the run. And in those opinions, the whole, that the ikar reason for hadacha kamaisa is to soften it. So in other words, what did we say? Okay, b'hefsa merubah, we say, you know what? Nothing happened. That's not the end of the world. Bo Hashem, he didn't cook the piece of meat yet. Go ahead and do it all over again. The salt didn't do its job. Salt didn't do its job. Bo Hashem, you can still do it. Go ahead. Have some rule. We rely on the run that the hadok is only to soften the meat. It's not a problem of the dambain and so forth. Great. So that's one hefzid meruba that tells us go ahead and do it all over again. And then here you would have another hefzid meruba to say that that piece is, is motor. He says, Beyesh oisub oiso chaticha. Though, right? In this case, Afilu B'deika Shishim, V'hochi Nohuk, Im Lelet Soyach, Kigon Lichvod Shabbos, or Lichvod Orchim, and so forth. The Az Yesh Lismo Chadim Rebakim, that then you can be lenient and rely on the other opinion that allows this one Chaticha. Even though he doesn't say Hefzim Meru, but it's the same kind of idea, that Soyach Shabbos. So Rebakim Eger says, well, to allow that Chaticha, you're basically doing two Hefzim Merubas. You follow me? The Hefzim Meruba of not having done Hadacha, that gives you a second chance, but here you didn't do a second chance. You actually went ahead and cooked it. 
So if you went ahead and cooked it, relying on that sheet that says that Hadokho is to soften it, you didn't do it. That means it wasn't softened. That means that the, the blood never came out. So according to the sheet of the run, nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> then it's basically similar to this. Right? That what? That is Nisbashir below Melicha. Uh, yeah, but here he says it has to be mutter. But Zerach Shabbos says, yeah, but you end up with two Hefzid Merubas, really. You're trying to rely on the two Shitas. You're trying to say here, oh, the Melicha didn't work because it was not softened. Plus, eh, it, it cooked, yeah, but we can rely on that other Shita also that says that the, the blood came out completely if, and whatever did not come out stays put. So down that, Rabbi Kivabia says, we don't allow for two Hefzid Merubas. So in the scenario, again, of Basar, Shanimlach without Hadokha Komaiso, then is Basho, and it was already cooked. He says that that piece would remain also, according to everybody at least. That's the way he says it. He also adds, by the way, that when you do do Melicha without Hadokha, we are concerned that a little blood did come out. And if that little blood came out, perhaps did go back and was reabsorbed into the meat, which the bishop will not be able to remove completely. So there is reason to suspect that this scenario is more serious than the scenario presented in Sifud Aleph, just that Basel was this Basha without Melicha at all. Here there was some Melicha, it just didn't work, but it may have worked a little bit, maybe it's even worse. No, no, there's no heter. If there's Shishim, can I get the Basel? You can have that Khatikha too, if you need it. If there's Shishim in the whole pot? Yeah, can I get that whole Basel? Oh, okay. hmm. <laughs> You would have to have a big pot. You would have to have a lot in order to have shishin connected the whole bus. We don't know how much down there is. So you need connected the whole bus. But how does it, the blood stays? The blood moves in the meat. How does that six shishim help you? If we're worried about the blood we're worried, moving we're, inside the meat, isn't that a problem? Yeah, of us? yeah, yeah. But remember, we, we said that the, the any the, the ones who are matir say the blood that moved moved out into uh -huh. the water. Uh -huh. Whatever does not move stays put. Okay. And the other ones say, no, not necessarily. It could be there was moving and not all of it came out. But it's a chumrah. In other words, we're concerned about that. That's what your mom says, the Tzorah Shabbos, if you don't really have enough meat, you need it, let's Tzorah Chorah him. You still need shishim. You still need shishim because you don't know how much blood came out. Can I get the whole chaticha? Yeah. Yeah, this is a serious situation. There was no melicha done to it. You have done. It's an isu de Rabban. I'm not how you write. Nevertheless, it's an isu. Uh, and uh, you need shishim like any isu de Rabban. All right, so now getting back to where we left off, we went on to discuss the the Sajorinim of Bosa Shalonim after Shloshim Yon within three days, that it could be a problem of being able to draw out that blood. But there was a solution if you know you're, you're running out of time. And that is, go ahead and rinse it or soak it. Rechab seems to be saying soaking because he uses the words if you're actually... Uh, put it in water within the three days, Yochola shows you can delay the melicha for another three days minus a half an hour. And we said that the mekor of this din is from a Chuva Samaram, that he has a Kabbalah from one of the Rishonim, that uh, that is a possibility. In other words, you can, you can be helped by soaking it in water to to avoid the, the humor of the goyim. Some don't uh, allow for it, because they say on the contrary, water at this point would make it harder. And, and some are machmir, but uh, pretty much that has been the minute throughout all of the Jewish communities. If, in, in, if there was a need to do that, everybody pretty much did that. So you don't see that, the, even though the Torah Shatas mentions it here in the Ramah, he doesn't mention the humra. So apparently, everybody's, the maisa, the maisa, their makel on this option. Okay, so even though it, it, we have a solution, soak it, rinse it in water, minus a half an hour, it does not tell us how much, and doesn't really explain to us why minus a half an hour, right? It, all it says is if you put it, you can put it in, you can delay it for another three days if you put it in, in water, and it doesn't say how much time, and you can put it, and you can delay the melicha for three days minus a half an hour. So what's this minus half an hour for? And, and also, how much time do you have to put it into water? It doesn't really tell us. And if you if you don't recall, I mean, it doesn't mean that basa that was not salted for three days has no solution. You can still roast it. 
The main problem was Bishel. That's important to remember. You know, it, it could happen. It's right, right. It, it's not that you can't do anything. You can't eat it. No, you can still eat it, but it's going to have to be roasted. So if it ever happens, you should know that you don't have to throw it away. Just that the melicha may not work, and you need to sleep. Well, yeah. Okay. So therefore, now with this halacha, we want to know how much time you have to put the shrio, and if rinsing is good enough too. So the Mechaber says, Efshar Lishois, Im Shoro Oiso Bemaim, Tok Shloisha Yomim Yochola Shoiso. He just says that you can soak it. He doesn't say how much time. And we don't know if, it's, if it would be good enough to wash it, to just rinse it a little bit. From the Lashon of the Mechaber, it's not so clear. So we have a, a, few, a few days, a few opinions in the Poiskim. The Isa Beheter and Torah's Chat is right. The you need to do shriya. Rinsing is not good enough. You actually have to soak it in the water. In order for this meat to, to still be functional, in other words, as far as getting the, the blood out through the salt, it has to be shriya. Lechatchila, that's the best way to do it. And the Yisra Behetta says, Ktsas show approximately an hour. Toroschata brings down from the augur an hour or two, which is interesting that you actually need that much amount of time. But that's, that's his opinion. I saw the Dr. Shuva bringing down from someone else that at least, at the very least, a half an hour. Yeah. Typically, they, you know, the, the places where they do this stuff. Right. They take the, at the slaughterhouse. Yeah. yeah. They take the part that they're going to cash, and they don't sit there and cut it up. They just, well, maybe do a little cut no, they do. They do. I mean, they remove, remove the veins and the, no, they don't they cut it up in small pieces, you mean? No, but I mean, there is they rinse thing. off the dambain. They do hose it down. But they don't. I, don't, I, I think they do soak it there. Maybe. Maybe. I, I've seen one place where they but did in soak the it. That they, yeah. yeah. Point is, is that does it talk about, about how. It, talking about how long you need to soak it. Yeah, you talk about how yeah. thick the myth. Uh, yeah. No, we spoke about it in the beginning of Hilchas Melicha. Yeah, it's okay. That regardless of the thickness of the meat, the salt still works. Is that what we're talking about? Oh, the soaking is. Oh, the soaking is not. It's not so much of an issue because ultimately, if it's surrounded with water, it will. It will be fine. Yeah, it gets through. Um, but I guess you know, that's a valid question because perhaps if it's a very thick piece of meat, you need longer. Maybe you need longer. Maybe you need longer. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, but apparently uh, the whole thing is a chumas so there's not that much uh, need to be machmir. And some water may do the job. And that is why you have even the Knesset Sakdoyla, for example, saying, the Knesset Sakdoyla says, yeah, you don't even need to soak it. If you just rinse it a little bit in water, that would be fine within the three days. The, there is a Shilas and Shuba that I saw uh, actually, it's on the Isra Behetu, because the Isra Behetu made a condition. If you remove the veins, then it's okay to just rinse it with water. If you did not remove the veins, then you have to soak it. But there was a, a Shalas and Shubat that I saw that says it's okay to rinse it even if you did not remove the veins. What is important, however, is that if you do rinse it, rinse it from both sides, because the Premier God and myself brings down here that if you did Hadocho, you just rinsed it from one side, that's not good enough. For two, in other words, to allow you to have an additional three days. You would have to really rinse it well from all sides. Others may be armatir, but the Premier God is much more than that. The question was raised last time, is how often can you do this? So I did see one, at least one uh, opinion that holds that you can do this several times to push it off by three more days, minus a half an hour, once you soak it in water. What's the point of the minus half an hour? And what, now, what is exact, now let's go to the minus half an hour. What was the point of the minus half an hour? So it's, it's much more from the Taz and from others that if, if you had, let's say, only 15 minutes and you began to soak it, 15 minutes to the, po- to the end of the three days, and you, the soaking is at least a half an hour, so it would not have soaked within the three days. So your three days will be up, which I thought is a really, I mean, the shach says, eh, the shach does, for some reason, 
you know, sometimes the shach is machmer, sometimes he's maker. So here he says, Bokhaz Kotsi Shoi says, Love Davka, focus me out a little bit. You don't have to be so half an hour, otherwise you're going to miss by the a deadline. By a second. Yeah, so I'm, I'm surprised, you know, why do you need that half an hour too? But Mechaber says that. So obviously he's thinking it, the quotes here, the augur, that Emshat is that if it's not a half an hour, then it will not, it will be three days without soaking, three complete days. In other words, just a few minutes. It's not going to do because you need at least a half an hour soaking according to this. But then why do we do with the opinions who said you have to soak it for more than half an hour? No, they all agree that at the very least. That's only la And maybe uh-huh. I did, maybe I failed to explain it. Right. They, I, I failed maybe to explain it that it appears that they say la that's how you should do it. Yeah. Because we do know, we do see that Sharia is more, is definitely more acceptable than just Hadacha. As far as how much time, they were not that makbi. They just said, Lechatchila do so. So, yeah, good point, you know. I think that it appears that that's only a Lechatchila in the Shir. Otherwise, yeah. Here he says, Pochos Chatzisha. The Shir should be at least a half an hour. Then the Ramah brings down, Boso Shenimlach. The Sofikim Nimlach Toch Sholosh, Shloisha Yomim Mutar. So the Ramah goes on to explain that if you have a situation where the meat was salted, but you are in doubt whether it was salted within the three days or not. What's the din? It's mutter. Yesh lehakel. In other words, you can be lenient. Why? As the, vil, as the girl brings down over here in the Bira Gron, the Sveiko de Rabbanu lehakel. Right? We have a cloud. Suffolk de Rabbanu. It's a Suffolk, right? It's a Suffolk in a de Rabbanu. So it's a Suffolk de Rabbanu lekulo. Kol Shekain here, the girl says, Kol Shekain ki hai gardo shu chumra sagoinim. Here, this is the whole thing is a chumra sagoin, right? The basa shaloi nimlak to shloisha yomim. The salt may not work on it. That's a chumra sagoin. So it's even more lenient than a regular suffix or a bonola. So if you have a suffix, oh, the three days go by, can I still do it or not? You know, if it's only a suffix, it's okay. It's a suffix or a bonola hoko. Remember, we had a big machloikas between the taz and the shach about a question if it was Bechlal Nimlach. That was a real big question, whether this meat, the, the balabas of the house is not sure whether she salted it or not. And that's a question where there was various details there, you know, various ideas that 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 either render it or muta depending how you hold. And one of those was, the Taz was saying that this is a Safi de Rabbanan because of the da. It was cooked already. It was cooked already. Or nimlach already, okay? And the, and the Shah, or in the Kudazakazov. Yeah, but it starts off as an Isra Duraisa. And based on how he holds in his uh, Hilchas of Sveikas, remember the famous Halachas of Sveikas, Sveikas, Sveik, and all that, he has his own rules about certain Sveikas that are not allowable. <laughs> and he says, that's not allowable. You, you started off with a Duraisa and you ended up with a Durabanan. That's not a Durabanan. You cannot call that a Safi Durabanan. So that, that is a much more complicated situation if a woman has a suffix, whether she salted or not, and she doesn't remember. You know, the, some of the police are saying, how could she not remember something like that? She does it all the time. So she, she does it all the time. Per, perhaps she did. Meat, five different pieces of meat to salt, and she doesn't remember this one, did she salt or not? No, but on, on the other hand, because there's so much done with, the, so it's a lot of work to do melicha that, you know, obviously if she doesn't remember, maybe she didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So we cannot say that sometimes there's a lochus in, in, in Kriyashma, in Brochus, you know, did I say it or did I not say it? Right. Well, if you started off saying, you probably said the whole thing. You know, because you went according to your routine. You know, it happens sometimes when you're in Kriyashma and you don't know, one second, did I say the second portion or just the fourth portion? Where am I holding? Do I have to go back? There's shilas like that in Allah, whether we hold that the fum rihato. In other words, he did it according to the way he's used to. This is also especially, even though it's a little bit different, did I say the same Talamata or not? Did I say Mashiv did I say Mashiv Ruach during the first during the days. Yeah. During the beginning, no, thirty days. Thirty ninety times. Oh ninety times. Yeah. Right? So after a while we figure you you probably said it because we see you have that amount much, much time, you probably said it. It's like a probability, the laws of probabilities. But if not, there's a chance you did forget because you're used to the old way. So we see that in halacha there's sometimes this laws of probabilities. And this is what we call chazaka. But there's also something called roiv. You know, 
and uh, Roiv is, is very strong. So the, that, that, that is some of the, the questions that were raised in that particular shana that was asked. You know, and the Taz was Mako. You know, he held for a variety of reasons. There's a good chance that she did salt the meat. So what was exactly the shayla that was asked? Well, it was salted. Piece, she, don't, she doesn't she remember. She had one piece of meat. Yeah. And she didn't remember if she salted it. Yeah. Or she was preparing several pieces of meat. And one of them she doesn't remember if she salted it. No, it was that particular piece of meat. Yeah, that, that one. That one. <laughs> that one. But was it one yeah. piece out of many that she had been preparing, or was it only one piece that she had been preparing altogether? Like, if there was only one piece that she had been preparing altogether, you're right. Well, how should she not share the salt? Let me see if I can. But she had four or five pieces, and there was a sixth one which she can't remember. Did yeah, I salt this one as well or not? I think it sounds more plausible. Yeah. I don't recall. I think it was just that one piece. Let me see if I can find it here. No, no, it's okay. No, it's over here. My Sebolio Deino. Yeah. Yes. Just in case you want to look it up. Yes. It's, an it's, a, it's a nice, it? it's a nice shtickle, as we say in Yiddish, or, yeah. or, in a task, to, to just go through his reasoning. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Uh, we assume it's only one piece, considering... In, in, in uh, Sifkot and Kof Dalet. Of the Taz. Right. To keep the meat? Yeah. So wouldn't we assume there was only one piece that she had to suffer from, as opposed to many pieces? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So here, yeah. So here he says, I'm just quoting him. So it's only totally one piece. It's one piece. You can't so only one piece. Question yeah. is, did she have several pieces to be to, to sold? And he says, no, no. The case of other pieces, we're going to see next. Because then we're going into Taruvas. Right? It's going to be mixed with others. But this was only apparently one piece. So this, on this, not the shot that you see, you, you see the, the opposing opinion in the Nakuda Sakesev. When you have time, it's, it's an interesting piece. All right, so we said that there are various sheets of how long you have to put it, but it does work. Apparently we hold that you can prolong the melicha for another couple of days if you need to. Otherwise, you're going to have to end up doing sleep. Now, did I understand you correctly that you could do another additional three days? Did yeah, you, you can push that? it off, yeah. Minus, you know. <laughs> How would that work? I, I wasn't in Mulea, and I didn't salt it. You, sal was, you soaked it in a half, half an hour in water. Yes. And now you have an additional up to three days, minus after half an the, hour. After the so soaking. After the soaking to, do, to not salt it again. But like I think you were beginning to say, without refrigeration, you know, I can't see that being prolonged too long. Yeah, right. Right? They could, yeah. they could put in it out In today's world, exactly. Because, because of refrigeration. Yeah. Every three days. Yeah. In the backyard in Poland, they could have lived. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Snow. In the winter. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you would have it hard like a rock, which would be, as that's we said, a moisture's chuva, which is a bedievet. Not the chathila, nobody should do that. Uh, as we said before, also another thing of lechatchila, one should not push off not doing melicha for three days, saying, "Well, I'm going to do tzli anyway." Maybe you'll forget. You want to be, you want to cook it. You see that, that somebody might say, "Okay, I don't." So what? Let it be four days. I'll do tzli. No, you may forget. So you, lechatchila, you don't push it off, even though you can do tzli because you may forget and do bishul. So that was the more. If you if you had a suffix in nimlach to gimel mutu, it's a suffix there Okay, next point. And this is a good question. What happens if it wasn't salted for three days and it's, Shab and, and it's Shabbos on the third day? And if you don't take care of this problem right now, by Moitzah Shabbos time, you have to make a barbecue. You won't be able to cook it anymore. Can you soak this piece of raw meat on Shabbos? So for those of, yeah, so for those of you who may have learned this part of Hilchah Shabbos, you may recall that raw meat is mukta. Even though there are some that say it's not exactly mukta. Why is why is raw meat mukta? Well, what would you think raw meat is mukta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't use it. You told us before that we could eat raw meat. Oh, oh. Right. very good. <laughs> why is it then mukta? Yeah. So technically you could. But most people are not going to eat raw meat. But since technically... Oh, so that's so you're right. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, so therefore there are, there's opinions who hold that yes, that raw meat, no, maybe raw chicken, yes. Okay, so we're going to get, we're getting, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But that's one of the issues with taking this meat 
on Shabbos. That, that is one of the problems presented. And isn't it also a question of tikkun? Oh, oh, very good. <laughs> good. Besides Mokse, Ilan is 100% right. You're not allowed to be misakin something on Shabbos. Prepare it. Uh, what would be an example of tikkun on Shabbos? Taking the radishes and, you know, and uh, salting it and making it, you know, tasty. On Shabbos, doing this whole dip uh, radishes to prepare it, it's called a form of tikkun of the food. You can't do it on Shabbos. But it's also Oh, Gvaldik. Hey, everybody's catching. <laughs> you, 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 you got them all. You got all the concerns right. Maybe we should do Shabbos sometime. Yeah, you got, them, you got them all right. That's the third concern. This is Achana. You know, you remember Achana. Yeah, you can't cook it on Shabbos. You can't prepare. Whatever you, what, what are you doing? You're preparing Lechol. <laughs> That's exactly all the concerns brought here, mentioned here. The Gabi, what to do about this piece of meat? And it's the third day it's Shabbos. Can you fix it? And it's not, don't think it's all Pashat. No, there's a whole there's Mishnah Bru on that. There's a Mogin Avram that. And you're Chaim, not here. About this kid, because it's Hilchus Shabbos. So this Allah comes up in Hilchus Shabbos, in the Mogin Avram, and the Mishnah Bru who mentions it too. <laughs> so these are some of the concerns, actually. All, those are the three concerns that I mentioned. Uh, in, the, in this case of. Huh? Anyway, so no, no, we'll, it's not, not, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, so the Mogan of Rome is actually the one who lists them all, and he says like this: since the Shriya is going to be metakin this basar, it's together tikkun. That's number one. It's, it's a form of tikkun. He says that the, the second reason he says the basar is muktzah, according to him, chazi leumsa, which is the, the, what you were saying before that you could you could eat it somehow it could be used. This piece of meat can be used. You can feed it to an animal, for example, right? It, it can be somehow used. The piece of meat, after it's defrosted, which is a separate problem, you would have to wait. It's not. It's not royal now, uh, but technically, it's possible. In other words, it can be edible. So, uh, so he doesn't hold of that. That that's possible by 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 meat, but it is possible with chicken. And Gimel, he says, it's a chana lechoil. Okay, fine. So the question is, but wait a minute, why can't I use a goy? Then it's not a goy to uh, bring it to Yeah, the just you know, tell the goy. Why? It should be okay with a goy. You know, sometimes people, by the way, this whole area of using a goy, people have, do not have too much clarity in this area of Hilkas Shabbos. A Shabbos goy, we always had a Shabbos goy. Shabbos goy was only mutter for certain things. Choyle being one of them. Right. Not you take him yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, there are times that we employ a goy, but there are the, there's pretty much a small list of when. And it's also a question how come. But the, uh, generally, the general rule, I think, I understood from Rabbi uh, Listen Kaplan gave here uh, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the Los Angeles call on right. that very topic of, uh-huh. of, of, of Amir Goy Shabbat, yeah, Amir al yeah. So he, so he said generally the rule is. Anything I can't do, I can't. That's do. the halach and Shabbos, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. The halach and Shabbos, no matter whatever I can't do, I can't tell a goy to do. Yeah, Rav takes this one step further. And even if he does it on his own, I'm not allowed of to benefit. Course, exactly. Even if the goy does it on his own, I'm not allowed to benefit from it, depending exactly what it is. The Moshe says about timers. People are also mistaken timer. Oh, timer! I'm not doing anything. He says you can't have a timer on on cooking. I was once Shabbos over someone's house. And they say, Rabbi, would you like to have coffee in the morning? I say, yeah, I usually have a coffee, but uh, which coffee do you have? Oh, the, at 7 o'clock in the morning, the coffee maker goes on and makes coffee. I says, you can't have that coffee. Oh, some rabbi told me it's okay. Well, that rabbi doesn't know what he's talking about. Timers, we only allow today with electric lights, because the electric lights are not exactly an isodorizer, not exactly, it's not ish. So we allow for that. Which lights are not Asian? The fluorescents. Oh, but what about the... Okay, no, also not. not. They're not exactly Asian. Maybe in Avdola you can consider the Asian, but we'll make her with timers. Because timers is not really melocha. I mean, it's, a, it's not even exactly a groma. Because it's, you know, you prepared it before Shabbos. It's happening by itself, and there's no shvisa scaling by Shabbos. You came in, if your wash machine started running before Shabbos, it could run into Shabbos. 
So there's some leniency with lights. But Ramayusha has a tshuva that he said, you can't have all your operations running on, on timers. Otherwise, you'll have your factors running on Shabbos. Everything's going to run on timers. So where is the lo, loy sasa, you know, melacha? In other words, lo, it, it says, you know, we, we, we darshan. It doesn't say lo ta'ase, lo te'ase kol melacha. Even through others. That's the, one of the drushes. Lo te'ase, it should not be done even through others, even through machines. If they begin to work on Shabbos. So even though it's not an Issa Deraisa, it's still understood from that that you just can't uh, do that. It's been, so therefore, cooking, having your crock pot going on on Shabbos and going off should not be allowed through timer. Because it's cooking. What? It even off. Even off. Yeah. Even though it's not the same. Okay, exactly. Even though it's not the same like turning it on. I tell people, don't use your timer on your crock pot at all. That, that is certainly your prerogative to tell them. Yeah. But to but I've heard many serious yeah. rabbis say that you can let them get go off. Yeah, exactly. There's no iser on that. But I still say, you know, that you should not do it only because of the problem of using the timer to begin with, that it may it it may lead them to, to have it turn on too. There's other reasons. Yeah. What about other electrical appliances? People use the air conditioners and other things. No problem. No problem. That's the same thing like lights. But not cooking. Not, your, not a timer on having your crock pot or your coffee make it go on at 7 o'clock in the morning and do the cook and cook for you. So when it turns off, like you said, nothing really happens. And if anything, it's just like lights turning off at that point. But because it's involved with the cooking process, I say don't use it at all. Not that it's usher, but don't use it. Yeah. That's what, that's what people ask me. You know, I say no, don't use it. When it comes to the cooking you know, don't involve your timer on a cooking appliance, that's all. On other items, air conditions, and lights, that's fine. Yeah. So anyway, so the question here is, maybe this would be permissible through a goy, because some cases, we are linked with a goy. And he says, no. Why? There's no hefzid maruba, he says here. Worst comes to worst. I mean, you can always do it sleep. You're not going to lose this piece of meat. It's not going to be a hefzid maruba. It's not going to be a major loss. And you, oh, you know, all the bohul and mamoyna, the rabbis tell us, are, people are concerned about the loss of money. Are we still talking about Hilfus Shabbos? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, 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 and if it and was, was a loss of money, Hilfus Shabbos, you're allowed to uh, violate it, it, it? Not not you, but there are situations. Uh, Amir Lakum, you mean? There are situations where, indirect, the where indirectly, yeah. The Chachomim, they said certain things you can do because he, if, you know, Adam Bohul al Mamoinoi, he, he, he's very, he gets very nervous about his money. If you do not allow him certain things, he, he, would, he, would do the Isra, he would do the Isra himself. It's, it's, this, this, is so mentioned, this is mentioned by, by, by Sreifa. Yeah, what happens Sreifa. if there's a house fire burn, on fire? In all kinds of situations where, what, do you, what could you say to Can you call the fireman? Can you uh, oh, have a goy extinguish it? And over there, but today, obviously, the reason we allow it is not because it's motor, only because it's a danger to other houses in the neighborhood. So it's a sakamas nefashas too. It's not just a loss of money per se. If all it would be is a loss of money, you cannot save your money yourself. Take it out. You cannot even take it out to Rishus <laughs> Rabin. Understand? But you can tell them. Right. You know, you can tell. Oh, whoever does it, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there are ways to deal with it. Yeah. There are ways to deal with that. So Amir al-Akum sometimes is possible. Sometimes is possible. But here they say it's not a real hefzid maruba, right, that we should allow for it. Because you can do it sleep. So that was the Mogan of Rome. What would be the din in Yontav, however, before we go into the others? Yeah, Yontav, you'll have to do things that are related to cooking. Your Yontav, it wouldn't be a problem of mukse, first of all, you're allowed to cook. And secondly, it's not a hachan al because you're allowed to cook it on your It's not a hachan al but wait a minute, oh, 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 wait a minute. You can't cook, can't be prepared for the next day. No, however. no one said for the next day, but for the same day you can prepare. Yeah, because it's not nicker. You do, you, do, you, do, you do not see that he's preparing it for the next day because maybe he needs it for now. Maybe it's not nicker. Exactly, that's what it's motor. It's not nicker that he's doing a chana for another day because he, maybe he's going to use it like you said now. He's going to have more gas, exactly. So it just remains. Because then you should end. not be able to do it at the end of it. Huh? You would not then be able to do it at the end of it. Let's say 10 minutes before. Right. Uh, yeah, then of course not. Yeah. Because it won't be ready on time. Yeah. Unless you need it for now. You know. Then it's not going to be ready on time. Yeah. It's going right. to be half raw. Oh, half raw. <laughs> it's going to be less than uh, Mahabant or Sai. Yeah. Anyway, the Liao Rabba is Choylek and the Mogan Avram. 
and he says that if there's no goy, obviously use a goy. If there's no goy, a Jew can do it too, because he doesn't. He holds that the basar is not moksa, and it's, it could be eaten, you know. Uh, or he says chazi leumza, even a regular basar. The the noy, I think it's the noy to be Yehuda. Let me see if I wrote him down here. But that, but that, the fact that it can be eaten is not going to help you with uh, Oh no, 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 tikkun, 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 very good. I think he writes the reason why this is not called tikkun. He says because we do find that you're allowed to soak or rinse vegetables on Shabbos, so they shouldn't they shouldn't become shriveled. Even for tomorrow. To, to preserve them. No, no, just to preserve them. You're not doing it for tomorrow. In other words, you're preserving them for now. You're preserving them. That they shouldn't... They shouldn't, be, they shouldn't Even though you're not planning to eat them now. Right. So it's not called tikkun mana. So because we find that in order not to lose it, you're allowed to spray water on it, that they shouldn't become uh, dry. So how does that argument work? Because so he holds that this is not called tikkun You're doing two different things. When you're spraying the vegetables... The spring itself is retaining their current status yeah. of being edible yeah. and preventing them from wilting. Right. Over Shabbos. Over Shabbos, yeah. Okay. But here we're not watering it in order to prevent it from wilting. Right. But it says it's not here called. The watering a, is a requirement in order to be able to continue. To save it, yeah. Later. But it's, he says it's similar. It's similar. It's not a real tikkun. To, it, nothing is really happening to the meat that is being metukan. It's not a real thing. Do we know whether it's softening or not? That if if it's just, it's just, it, it, it's it was to soften it. No, no, but here it's. You can't be holding that way. Yeah, no, you're right. But here, the, the, the soaking in the water is not so much being metak in the buster, he says. It's just saving you the time. It's, 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 it's giving you more time to be able to do the malicha. Here's why I find it so difficult to compare the two things. Yeah. With respect to the vegetables, it's a natural process that they would otherwise will. Right. And you're, you're, you're yeah. preventing it. You're not doing, why is it called a taken by the meat? Because it's not because it's a natural process that you're doing something about the meat. It's a halachic requirement. Once you come to fulfill a halachic requirement, yeah. that's a whole different act that you're doing. Yeah. What you're accomplishing is something else. Yeah, but let me give you a more typical example of tikkun. I understand what you're saying, where you come from. That's why the Bogdan of Ram says it's asa. You have a keli that you didn't take to the mikveh for Shabbos. Okay. You can't be toivul kelim on Shabbos. Right. You just bought something in Kmart and, oh, ask, we forgot, forgot to take it to the mikra. Right. You, we don't toivel the wine in Shabbat because it's a tikkun mana. And what's the tikkun here? It's be- making it kosher. It's making it. It's it's making usable. it confirm with a halacha. It's making it usable. It's right. making it usable yeah. because it confirms with a halacha. You're doing right. the exact same thing with the meat right now. The right. kli, when you take it to the mikra, you're making it. That's the act that's making it usable. Right. Doing the hadacha, doing the soaking, is not making it usable because it still has to go to malicha. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the that's, that's the difference, yeah. So but, he's, but the malicha only works if it was if it had a dog. Right, yeah, yeah. In other words, it's making it usable for malicha. Right, right. No, right. But, that, but that's another one of two steps. Right. It's more indirect. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we have a, that's what we have a Magin of Rome. Yeah, they, they look at it differently. But anyway, I, I very much like what I saw in the Noida B. Yehuda. Noida B. Yehuda says that. You know why this is not muksa? He doesn't, I mean, he talks about the other issues too, but mo- mostly, he was concerned mostly about the muksa part here for some reason. He says, what's the problem? It's not muksa at all. You're not touching the meat. Yeah, because muksa is a question of carrying. So. Carrying, moving it around. He says, you don't have to touch it here, really. Even though you're doing something for it, there's a whole shaila about muksa if you're doing something for the muksa, but you're not really touching it. You know, you're just pouring water or adding water or whatever, doing something to... to you know, normally, to make it soak in water, but that's not called. You would have to carry it into the container. Normally, exactly. So maybe th- they you thought. Throw it in a container and just exactly. Consider. So that would be maybe, maybe more of a question that they all would agree that if that was the case, the problem of Wuxa wouldn't apply, but you still had the, pro- the other problems. You're right. But uh, he, that's what he, he, in other words, that's what he says they got with the Wuxa part. There's no shash. Just pour water on it. Anyway, the Mishnah Brora, Allah Chalamaisi, he brings, he actually quotes the Mogan of Rav and says it's... it's, it's uh, I have another question yeah. on the Muktzah before you continue. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Muktzah is a rabbinical din. Right, that's correct. And the, the, uh, and the Indian that we're having here with the, with the, with the salting is also a rabbinical din. It's a goyim. Yeah. With, with, this, with this time right, frame. Right. It has to be done within this time frame. Right. So why would we be concerned for a Rabbanan that is affecting a Rabbanan? 
And we don't have a arise here that we're trying to uh, to build a fence. If Mukta was a Daraisa there, yeah. then I can see that you have a problem with it. Right. But the Mukta is a Darabanan in itself. Yeah. So you're saying two Darabanans? No, basically I've got two Darabanans. Yeah. What would I be violating if I'm violating the Mukta by doing the... Yeah, but you, even then, even if you have a two Darabanans, you can't just do it yourself. So you, what you're saying is allow a Goy to do it. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Because, of, yeah, in Okhinam. So, so the Mishnah Brura says... He brings out first the Mogin of Ram, and he says, the Mogin of Ram answers because of all those reasons, including a Goy. But he does say, Mokum Hefsim Maruba. What could be a Hefsim Maruba in this kind of situation when you won't be able to roast it because we're dealing with, with ducks and with the, with the fats in the ducks that they very much wanted to preserve. And if you roast it, you're going to be basically melting away the, 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 the schmaltz. Yeah, that's what I saw. I, I was wondering what Hefsim could there be. That he doesn't want to roast it for some reason because the roasting would be a hefsa to him to do it that way. All right, so he he brings down the nehefsa maruba. You can tell a goy to do it, it would be even tough. according to the Bogan of Ram, the Mishnah Brewer says. But he, I think he later on says he does later on he says. But there are others who are makel altogether that you can just put it, in, you know. Uh, yeah, and he talks specifically about ducks and not geese. Not only would be goose. Is it the geese? Okay, maybe. Okay, I don't remember which one it is. Maybe it's the geese. Genzer yeah, Schmalz. yeah, Genzer Schmalz. Yeah, yeah. Even though the the the, the goose, the ducks is also pretty fatty, mm -hmm. but I think the the one you're talking about the is, one is, the is, is actually the one they usually the use. Genzer yeah, the yeah. Anyway, there are points schemes that are makele not like the mugging of them altogether. I think he brings down that towards the end. So it appears to be that the Mr. Bro is saying, you know what, there are points schemes that are matter bechlau. To, to t put it into water. Uh, there are, however, I saw two or three poiskim, as I was looking through the, the various poiskim, who say, do it be ha'aromo. Now, ha'aromo is something that we also came across with in Hilchus Tarubus, and that is, do it indirectly in a tricky way. Aroma, the word means trick. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of these things, but sometimes it's possible. An example of ha'aromo is, wash your hands over it. You have to rinse your hands, Right? Not the Tilosidayim water. <laughs> you know, the no, I was saying uh, yeah. just on the Daf Yomi region. Yeah, wash your hands. You have to wash your hands. Do it there. <laughs> <laughs> so this way you accomplish two things. Yeah, Gemara had a similar thing with respect to the dust on the floor because you have the problem that if you're going to uh, spray water on the floor that, that this could also be a uh, week to uh, uh, the floor even in our yeah, opinion. Yeah. Yeah. They said, okay, so if the woman has to rinse dishes, let her rinse at the place where you want to uh, have the yeah. dust. Yeah, yeah, we, we do find that in Allah has in several places that, that it's mutter. But uh, I would just use a goy, because, but the problem is sometimes you don't have a goy, so that's why we need to know what the Allah has. There are some who are makel, therefore, in order for you not to lose the the meat. Uh, and, 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 and Even though it's not a loss, you can roast it, but anyway, yeah. I don't know whether Andrea the Akum is really that much more lenient than Harama. It's different. It's a different kind of heter. No, but I mean, you know, like is, is more like a mevatel iser lechatchila. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look good. Whereas Amir al Akum is mutter in certain situations, mamish mutter. Yeah, in certain situations. Yeah, in certain yeah, situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's just begin, go briefly into the next Saif. And that is, and, and let me read it first inside. So we're still talking about a bus that was without Melicha for three days. When that piece of meat got mixed up, the Chatichos, the with other pieces of meat, it's bottle Beroiv. You can cook them all. Even though it's a piece of meat which is ruyul eskabed, and if you remember from Tarubis, ruyul eskabed means it's a, it's a geshmak, a big piece of meat, that you know, like a piece of steak, huh? And that's an abatra filu be'elef, right? Nice, big. That's you know, you don't have the halachas of bitu beroiv in there in that case. Yeah, it's it's a ruyul eskabed. We're talking about they're all like that, so therefore it's not meikar. If it's meikar, you just remove it. So it's bottle. And, and the Ramos says, "Vehu bechen adin benis bashel." If it was cooked below melicha, benis arab achal kach bechers, and it was cooked later on with others. So you have here a piece of meat, and the chaber is not clear what happened to this piece of meat. Was it salted or not salted? Even though 
it appears more likely that he's saying that this piece of meat was salted after three days. The language reads as follows. Did you salt it or afterwards or not? He doesn't say. Were they salted or not salted? He doesn't say. So it's a little bit unclear what exactly he's talking about. But we do have the various scenarios. Shach and Tash speak about it a little bit. And uh, the, the main, one of the main ideas that comes out from this Seif, uh, that, it, that, it, that even though it was mixed, it's about to be royal, the Chidosh here is that even though this piece of meat, or this piece of cheese, whatever it is, is a Dover Sheyeshlo Matirin, that's a Chidosh here. You could right now, in order to avoid any problems, you can go ahead and roast this piece of meat, the, the, these meat. Why should we have to apply the din of bitul beroiv? Now, as far as royalist kabbat, we know why. Why is why is why is this not? Why is this bottle even though it's royalist kabbat? Because it's not an isur machmas atzmo. We learned that several times. It has because of the dama balua inside. Remember that? That was one of the conditions. Mm-hmm. So the chid, that's not a chidush. It's bottom still. Why? Because it's not Isu Mahmoud Sansa. It's Isu Mahmoud the dama balua. But the chidush here is, but what, what do I mean? It's a double shayesh no material. I can take care of this problem. I can go ahead and just roast the whole thing. So why should I have bitu baroiv? This is not, a, the reef actually holds that this is a double shayesh no material myself. The reef holds this, you know. Would not be uh, an exception. It would be a double shayesh uh, material. But uh, everybody seems to be saying here, like the rabbi, that the din of double shayesh material does not apply only in a massive where what is usher now will become mutter. You follow me? What is usher now? I mean, what, what's usher the bishul? I can roast it as a solution. It's not a double shayesh material. Double shayesh material means. What is also for me now, what I can't do now, eventually will become water. An egg that was, was, was laid on Yontav. After Yontav, it's okay. Right? Wait! Don't have it now. You wait. I don't know, it got mixed up. Wait, just wait till the next day. It's a double shayesh no material. At some point in time, the thing itself that is not the thing that becomes permitted. You're permitted, right? So here, this is not this is not a, a typical double shayesh no material. This is not the issue we're talking about. Yeah. Right now it's not prohibited. Yeah. No, and that which is prohibited in the sense will not become mutter later to cook. So, but you're allowed to. Cook. If you were to cook it, then you're allowed to eat it. Cook it. There's no Israel of cooking like the Basavahal. Basavahal, you're not allowed to cook. Yeah, that's something else. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. There's no so Israel in the cooking. Right? Yeah. There's no Israel in the cooking. Had you cooked it, then he won't be able to, to, eat, it. Able to eat it. Right. So you can still sell it. Yeah. So, so Dover Sheyesh no material here does not apply. The way, you know, was what, what is Asr here will not become Motor. That's not, that, would, that would be the typical case of Dover Sheyesh no material. You know, here for Tzli, it was never also to begin with. In other words, it's going to be mutter litzli. Yeah, but it's not also right now for tzli. In other words, there's no iser applying here. At this moment, there's no iser that at some point will become mutter. So the shach, quick question, just with uh, the shach's question is, okay. What would be the davash, what would be the material here? Davash is material. What would be the material? It looks like that you will be able to take care of it through tzli. You know, it's, it's, there's a way to make this mutter. You can avoid the hefzit. You can avoid the, yeah. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, it's not. But it's not. It's not that you're going to permit something that's currently forbidden. Exactly. Yeah. It's just you. You, you can avoid the hefs. That's all. Yeah. So it's not a real double shesh no material. So that's the chiddush here. That even though you can do it this way, it's not really a double shesh no material. Yeah. But anyway, the shach. Real quickly, the shach has a good question here. Yeah. Go ahead. No, if something is discernible, then you can. It's not. There's no in an obitol at all. It doesn't apply. Right. I mean, you have to take it out. And you would have to take it out. Sure. Here the. But, but, but the idea is that you would have to roast everything. In other words. Oh, yeah, yeah. You would have to roast everything. Yeah. Correctly. Right. So, yeah. So the shach asked the question here: Is wait a minute? Why is this what's of the roiv? Isn't this a min b'shein or minoy? There's dam. And any time it's, even though it's Yovish be Yovish, 
Anytime it's mean b'shein or we hold you need shishim shema yivashal. Remember that from Taruvas. Anytime, even though it's yavish be yavish, if it's mean b'shein or minoy, you need shishim because you may cook it. And so what if you cook it? It's going to be tam. So the shach says, you know, he's bothered by this. He says, why? He says, I don't understand why this should be bought little bit right over here. What could be different, different about this? So he himself brings down two terusim. I'll just mention one right now. He says the whole issue here is mechumar sagoinim. They didn't require shishim. That's the easy answer. That's what he wants to say. He brings down another from the, from the east of Eheter. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit lengthy, so I'm not going to go into that. But they, I saw the pre chodesh and the kudos the dog of the They all they all they all write. Hey, shach, you in Tarubas, you hold that this that in a derabanan. You don't say, you don't go to the Shema Yevashel. In the Isra, the Rabbana, the Shach himself said in Simon Kuftes that Yavesh be Yavesh, right? You're not, you, don't, you, don't gaz, you're, you don't make a zero of Shema Yevashel in an Isra, the Rabbana. So this is an Isra, the Rabbana, right? If you cooked or if you salted the meat, uh, it's an Isra, the Rabbana. So I had a little problem with this. And I saw the Minchas, one of the points he wrote, that since the Shach would, did not himself mention something obvious, uh, apparently he holds that this is not a typical Issa Durabana because it starts off, the Ikar here is an Issa Doraisa. And I think that's, that's pretty much on, on target, because that's, that, I, I was also a little bit questioning that reasoning from the other points game, the, the Pri Chodosh, because like I said, this is not an Nisra Durban. This starts off. That was the whole Machloikas Nikunsa Kesem in the Taza. And that lady that has a suffix. Did she, did she solve this piece of meat or not? It starts off as an Nisra Durban. Well, what is the Kabbana of the Nisra Durban? This is not an Nisra Durban, is it? I mean, that, that's. What, what is the Kabbana of the Nisra Durban? I mean, you call it an Nisra Durban. What, what is it? What, what is the Nisra Durban that they're talking about? Damshin is Basho, Damshin Nimlach. Damshin is Basho. Right. Okay. Right. So, why would it start off as an Nisra Durban? Because before it was misbashal, it didn't move anywhere. We're not worried about it moving before it cooked. Right. We're, we're worried about it moving during the cooking process. During the cooking process, right. But at that point in time, is it still called uh, a, 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 a mesodera rice? Well, remember, the whole, the whole issue of dam, to begin with, as it starts, is an mesodera rice here. But you're right, there are various levels over here of... Of, uh, depending on what stage, at what point did it move or not move, or whether you consider it an Isra Doraisa or not. Yeah, but the Iker Isra here of Dam is a Doraisa, they could do. Right? Well, Dam Hanefesh. Dam, 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 Yeah. Dam, 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 no, there are some who say the Raisa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, Machlekes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's only here on Dam She, you know, Dam Hayevorim is the, is, is the question that we're dealing with right now. You know, what's the din of that? And that, well, it makes a difference whether it appears or not. Yeah. Dam She appears through cooking. Yeah. Is that not, is it the Raban or is it the Raisa? Yeah. At the time you come to eat it, at the time you come to eat it, it's already the Rabbana. At that time, it's a Rabbana. And before yeah. that, was it an Isser? What's the Isser? The Isser is the eating. What do you mean the Isser is the eating? You know, was a, so long as it was not porridge, you say there's no Isser. I don't no, know what I'm saying. so long yeah. as you didn't eat it, you're not over any Isser. Right, yeah. You, you, you will only be over an Isser yeah. once you eat it. Yeah. And once you eat it, it's a Rabbana. Yeah, you're right, you're right. That's why they say that the, the Lashon they use that is that Me'ikoroi. It's a derisa, and it was the essence of this din, the shorish, the root of this din, has a, a root in a derisa. <coughs> Even though it's coming down, mitgalgel, it's coming down to a derabanan in its various stages. It has a root. It has, it, it, it's, not a, it's not an issue that the derabanan made up. You follow me? It's, there's an issue of the derabanan, the derabanan said, let's ask her this situation. They made it up. They were goyzer. Here, it's an issue that has its roots in an Yisra the Raisa, but because of the way it is now, it's a Durabana. So that's called an Ikoroi. An Yisra that in the Ikoroi is the Raisa. The, the, some want to say that, that the Shach, therefore, would be Machmir here. The crazy place, the Chavastas, and I saw the Orcha Shulchan right before I came. I also noticed that the Orcha Shulchan also agrees with them that since when you cook, you have Tzir and Dam, 
you won't ever ever feel the time of the dam. It's going to get lost in the tear, in the, in, the, in the other juices of the meat. And that is why they, they were lenient in this kind of case to say that it's bottled the roif, not require shishim. But anyway, next week we'll see with Hashem the, the various scenarios of what the Mechavah is talking about. And there's basically th- four, three or four scenarios of whether the two were salted, just one was salted after three days and the others were salted on time, or neither of them was salted. Okay, neither of them was salted, then, then you have to salt it now. Can you salt them all together? Or do you have to salt them separately? So, Because the push-up shot of the Mechaber is they were all salted already. That's the push-up shot in the Mechaber. That's the scenario. This one was salted after three days. Everything was salted within the three days. They got mixed up together. Okay, it's about to arrive. All right? So, the Goinim, we're lenient. It's already salted. The question is, can I cook it? You can cook it. You cook it even together. Then there was a second. What if they were not salted? You, you, if they were not salted, they'd go ahead and salt it. The Taz even, but the Taz on that scenario says, no, you don't even have to salt it. If one piece was not salted within th- after three days, it hasn't been salted every... And they were not, so, and I'm sorry, and they, the third, that's the third scenario. The third scenario is this thing was not salted after three days. These were already salted in time. Then they got mixed up. Do I have to salt it again? On that, I think the Taz says, no, you don't have to do it again. Uh, so that's, that would be a chidush. But if they were neither of them salted, then you would have to salt them together. But the, on that, there would be a question of whether you need to salt them separately or salt them together. Comes along the Ramon, adds his own case, even if it was cooked without being salted, then it was mixed up, that would also be good. That would, words, that would also be bottle, which is also a big chidush, but it's the same kind of an idea that, of course, the Shach asks on that too. But if it's a Durabana, then it's bottle by right. Just he says that maybe, maybe the Ramah meant Shishim. So he, he remains with a Tzorach and what the Ramah actually meant, the Chain, in that case. If it was cooked, but in the case where they were not salted, you can salt them. The only question is, can you salt them separate uh, together or can you, you need to salt them separate? So these, these various scenarios, Mr. Shem, we will see next week. It's, uh, it's all a question of uh, Taruvas. But it, this, in this particular case, it's more of a derabanan than it is a deraisa. Even though the, it, there is a nekuda here that the ikaray is of, of this din is me me deraisa. In other words, it's, it, it involves blood. However, if you have not salted it yet, then you can still salt it. In other words, so okay. But this was already after three days. But that's a chumas going them. So it's a little bit less of a problem. The the, the, the bigger issue is. The, I think the shot's bigger issue is with the one that was cooked without melisa altogether, because that has no solution. You know, this one that means you salted. Okay, so you salt it. So they salted already. Okay, did it work? Did it not work? If you didn't salt it, we would go ahead and salt it. So it's less of a problem. In those cases, it's much less of a problem than the case of the Ramon, where it's already cooked without having been salted at all. You know, why, why should we say it's about to be right? So that, on that, he still has a sort of here on that particular Ramon. But it seems to be that uh, that this would also qualify as bottle beroiv if we say that it's only an issue derabon like the shach himself says there. So that's the will be for next week. Okay.